Good evening, Stats fans, and welcome to another edition of Stats Center, presented by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. I'm Robert Adut from yaymath.org, and tonight, I'm all about that data, about that data. Show title. Take a look at any athlete's profile and you will see data. A whole big stinking pile of data. And what player would have a more massive collection of data than my man, Dr. Shaquille O'Neal? Check out all the data we can analyze and discuss. Points, rebounds, assists, minutes per game, free throws, and salary. The list goes on and on and on and. But before we can analyze data, we'll have to understand what kind of data we're talking about. With me tonight to shed light on this topic is the Diesel himself, former NBA star center, Shaq. Great having you on Stat Center, Big Aristotle. I don't go by that name anymore, Robert. My mistake, Big Diesel. And don't call me that either, Robert. So Shaq, break it down for us. What kinds of data are out there? Any type of data is gonna fit into one or two camps, qualitative or quantitative. That reminds Still me. Still talking, Robert. With qualitative data, we're asking ourselves, can the data be arranged into categories? Is it describing something? Examples of qualitative data would include the college I attended, LSU baby, and my position on the court center. For you, Robert, we could categorize the sports jacket you're wearing as horribly out of style or your necktie as 80s floral. With me so far? Well, we're each entitled to our opinion. Now with quantitative data, we're asking ourselves, are the data numerical? Quantitative data would include points scored or minutes played in a game, like 30 points or 40 minutes. When you're thinking about how to classify any data, just ask yourself this, is the data value a description or a number? So a baseball player's position, like pitcher or catcher, is grouped in a category and therefore is qualitative. But the speed a pitcher throws is actually measured and how many batters he strikes out is counted Measured and counted data are numerical and therefore quantitative. Oh, so now you're too good for basketball? Sorry, I was just trying to extend our examples to other sports. Your logic's good, but it's not foolproof. Taking it back to basketball, if that's all right by you. It's your game, big guy. When we refer to players' positions by number, like one for point guard or five for center, the values are considered qualitative because the numbers are being used to categorize rather than to measure or to count. Sounds a bit tricky. No trickier than the pattern in your tie. Let's look at some more examples. Take my boy, D. Wade. Wade plays shooting guard, so that's a- Qualitative variable. You know it. He wears the number three. Boom, quantitative. Hold up, three. It may be a number, but it's a qualitative value because it's only being used to identify the player. 30 seconds. That is very, very interesting. By itself, 30 seconds in a game would be quantum. No, I meant we have only 30 seconds left. So really quick, why is it so important to distinguish between the two types of data? Part of a longer discussion, which I cite in my doctoral research. But overall, the methods for analyzing these two types of data are very different. With qualitative data, we're mostly counting items in a category. But with quantitative data, we can look at the items in relation to each other and do calculations with the data, like finding averages and extreme values. We'll be examining those concepts in future segments. But when it comes to identifying different types of data, Mr. Uh, excuse me, Dr. O'Neill, I think you've given us a stellar performance. I never give anything less. Can you dig it? Well, except maybe my acting in Kazam. A fine movie. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Stat Center. Keep it one standard deviation ahead of the curve, stats fans. Oh, and Robert, I'll put you in touch with my personal shopper. These were gifts from Craig Sager. <laughs> Hook me up with a suit for my birthday.